Hey guys, it's Jamie and I'm here with a rant, kind of a random video, um, because I'm obviously not pregnant anymore. Uh, Vivi is, you know, gosh, she's moving on to be like almost seven months. It's crazy. Um, but I like watching videos still on girls that are pregnant or like post pregnancy videos or whatever, just to see like, you know, to what happens because like I feel like okay pregnancy for every woman is different no woman's pregnancy is the same um and so post-pregnancy has to be like that too right I mean I live around a lot of girls that have had babies recently and um you know we all went through different things during pregnancy and post-pregnancy so I just wanted to talk about things that happen to things that happen to your body post pregnancy and some of these things I didn't know so most of them are things I didn't know that happened to your body post pregnancy um, and I just thought it was funny because I had written some of them down earlier in the year you know right after I had her because I'm like am I normal is this normal <laughs> so I thought I would go and start talking with okay so the first one I wrote down was I had so I had Vivi on December 14th last year 2015 and probably two weeks later I started noticing that um it's my left hand I started noticing that I was hurting like through here and I've had tendonitis before once before a few, several years ago and I thought it was something instead of the doctor we thought it was something that like I was playing with Jade like tug of war or something where it was repetitive movement or something that jarred me or whatever so I've had tendonitis before and I've had to wear the little hand brace and take like anti-inflammatory medications that was years ago when Jade was a puppy okay so I started noticing it and it was like in my thumb and down here a little bit and I realized that it hurt every time I went to like go pick up the baby um and okay the baby was like you know eight pounds you know not like she's huge it's not like I'm picking up you know a 25 pound bag of dog food or something but it was just that motion of every time I'd go to get her, you know, out of her little sleeper thing or move her or whatever, like when I'm changing her, like just how I picked her up, her little weight just would land on my thumb. So then, you know, my mom, my mom was like, yeah, it's probably tendonitis. Wes said the same thing. And, you know, it progressively got a little worse, but I started to try to like correct it with using this hand. And I realized that by, I mean, this went on for months. This went on for months. Uh, it started in, in end of December. By January, early February, I had it in this hand, um, down my thumb, and then both of them started shooting pains down my right here. Uh, and I went to my general practitioner towards the end of February, and of course he said, I think it's tendonitis. He did prescribe an anti-inflammatory, which is just like a, I think it was like a high dosage Aleve or something, and told me to be in those braces, which I was, but the problem was the braces I was wearing, you could still move your thumb. And you know, by then, it was the beginning of March, I was going back to work, Vivi was going to daycare, my cousin had a major surgery that we were out of town for. It was just a lot of stuff going on that I did not have time to take care of myself. Um, you know, not that that's a big deal, but I can't tell you the pain that I had on a daily basis just picking up my child. And you know, every day she's getting bigger. So it was like, this is not going to go away. Like, what's going to happen? Um, and I believe by... Gosh, I think it was early April. I can't quite remember when I actually finally did it, but I went to um, I went to a doctor, like a, a hand doctor, a specialty doctor, and he said it was tendonitis. He named the type of tendonitis, which if I can remember what it was, I'll write it down here. But basically, like when I Googled it, it's like mommy wrist. It's like a common, can be a common thing for women who have babies because you're repetitively lifting, you're repetitively doing this stuff, and you're putting weight on it. Um, and so, let me tell you what he did. Um, he knew the pills didn't work. Uh, I did get fitted and had special braces that didn't move anything. And, you know, it was hard wearing them at work because you have to type. Uh, but I would try to put them on a little bit every day, um, and I wore them at night. I definitely think they helped, but he gave me cortisone shots. Let's take a minute for that, because some of you, I'm sure, have had cortisone shots, and I feel I feel you. Um, but for me, and I felt like, hey, I just had a baby. I can handle anything, and I went by myself, like, not a big deal. But he gave me cortisone shots, like, right here, like, in my bone, like, at the bone, not in my bone, like, at the bone. And I thought my wrist was going to break in half. And, you know, then you have to wait and he has to do the other one. Um, wow. 
uh, they gave you like some numbing spray or water or whatever, but that, mm -mm, mm -mm, they did not, yeah, I didn't feel the actual needle go in. It was when he released the cortisone that I was like, oh my God, I think he's breaking both of my wrists. <laughs> um, they were so sensitive. They were so sore. I felt so nasty the rest of the day and I worked from home that day and I could barely do anything. It was like stupid. Uh, but months later, here I am, knock on everything. I don't have tendonitis anymore, so it worked. That must have been what it was. The cortisone, which we didn't know if that was going to clear it up or not, but the shots cleared it up, and now I can hold my, like, 18-pound child and keep on moving, and I'm not having any other issues. But I had no idea that you just had a baby, and now you've got this issue. This issue you know what I mean? Anyway, you'll have to let me know if any of these things have happened to you. Uh, let's talk about stretch marks. Because all through pregnancy, I did not have stretch marks. I was so lucky and so thankful. And I slathered on everything. And I had Wes all like, hey, I can't see under my stomach. Can you see? And he's like, girl, you're looking good. Got back from having a baby. Still used all the same creams and stuff. Because um, I didn't have a C-section. So there was nothing to like worry about. And gosh, it was... I mean, Wes was looking at me, he was like, oh my gosh, your stomach's really bounced back. Like, your skin looks so good. I mean, he was investigating. Two weeks later, I'm in the mirror in the bathroom, and I'm like, what is, what are they? Um, and they were stretch marks uh, beneath my belly button. They have gotten better, but they're still there. And I had no idea. I was under the assumption, and this won't happen to everybody, so I'm not trying to scare anybody. But I was under the assumption if you didn't see them during your pregnancy that they weren't going to show up. And I don't know why that happens. I don't know if they were there so microfine that we couldn't see them. But I'm telling you, we paid so much attention to it. Because not to be like vain or anything, because I'm not a vain person, but I don't, I didn't want stretch marks. I don't want those. Um... Why should women have to have all that stuff when we've done the ultimate thing and had a baby? Like, are we being punished? Because <laughs> um, they're annoying. They're annoying. But yeah, they came up afterwards. And, you know, they're, like I said, they're getting better. And at least they're in a spot that's not like, I mean, really, who's going to see it? You, wait, will it? Yeah, you'd see it, I guess, if I didn't wear a one-piece bathing suit, which, you know, this year I'm totes in a one-piece bathing suit. Maybe for the rest of my life. Who knows? Um, yeah, the next thing which they did, the nurses did tell me about, uh, night sweats. So I knew coming home from having a baby that at some point very soon I was going to start sweating in my sleep and it was a way for women who've had babies to like release some of the excess fluid that you've retained during pregnancy. Um, that lasted for a while. It lasted for probably a month and a half or so and then it stopped. And I was like, wow, I must be like out of that. Like I was be so damp that I have to like change my shirt and that doesn't usually happen to me um but I will say it stopped for a long time I thought like maybe a couple months and I feel like it's back I don't know what's changing in my system I don't know you know when you're pregnant your hormone your hormones hello <laughs> when you're pregnant your hormones go haywire I mean they're all over the place and and Men, bless their hearts. I think Wes might be the only man in my life that, like, kind of that gets it. But men will have no idea what we go through with these raging hormones inside of us. What we deal with on a monthly basis and what we deal with when we're pregnant. What we deal with when we're teenagers. You know, what we deal with as we get older. But yeah, night sweats. I still have them. Um, like I said, they stopped and they're back. And I don't know if that's from pregnancy or not. But I never had them pre-pregnancy. And now I have them. Um, oh, and random day sweats. <laughs> <laughs> I'm someone who's cold 24-7, and, you know, I still have that a lot where I'm cold. Uh, but I am noticing that sometimes during the day I tend to get a little overheated. Not like I break out into a sweat like at nighttime and, like, my clothes are wet. But I will notice at work or just, you know, around the house sometimes I'm like, I'm really hot. Maybe it's because I'm carrying around a baby who runs hot. I don't know. But I am noticing that that's different. I never said that stuff before. I was always cold always like give me a sweater and you know I'm still like that to some degree but I have just noticed sometimes that I'm like mm, that's different <laughs> um hair fallout okay so I did know about this one and some women have it so hardcore and I feel so bad for you I have a lot of hair this is a lot a lot of hair um 
and you know at during pregnancy at some point for me it stopped falling out and it just got thicker and thicker and thicker um and then right after i had the baby it d doesn't just start falling out not for me it was a few months after i had the baby that probably three months after the baby three or four months maybe month four that i noticed that i was seeing a lot more hair like on the floor i really got spoiled being pregnant and not having to de deal with like hair dolls all over my floor because i the dogs aren't a problem here. Bubba. Hi, Bubba. I don't know if you guys can hear him. He was he was cleaning. Um, but the dogs aren't a problem shedding. I am. And I feel like I'm still... I guess I'm, I'm six and a half, on, you know, six and a half, six, three weeks post having a baby as I film this video. I don't know when this is going up. Probably, probably I'll be closer to seven months when this goes up. But um, I'm still shedding, obviously, but I do think it's finally like... Now it's my normal shedding and not like a barrage, crazy barrage of hair. Um, so I was told when I left the hospital that my feet and ankles would be swollen for a while. And they were. And I had no idea. When the nurse said that, I'm like... I mean, I looked down. I could see they were still swollen while I was in the hospital. But I was like, why? Like, haven't I... <laughs> Because <laughs> I hadn't even shown you guys. I had I took a picture and sent it to my best friend Mindy uh, one night when I was still pregnant. And my feet and ankle, it looked scary. So scary that Wes was like, because he'd rub my feet at nighttime. And he was like, hey, don't take offense to this, but I kind of don't want to touch them. And I started cracking up because I'm looking at them. And I'm like, I wouldn't touch them either. I was just going to try to pull one over on them. <laughs> but they were out of control. So I kind of thought like, well, oh, yeah, after I have a baby, like a week later, they'll be back to normal. I'll be fitting in regular shoes. That was not the case for me. I came home with still swollen feet. Not like crazy big like pregnant feet, but swollen feet. And, you know, I couldn't fit into my Toms. I had my winter Toms. Couldn't fit into those for probably two months. Um... But I am noticing now, and obviously it's summer and it's hot, so my feet are going to swell a little bit. But I feel like they're so sensitive now, and they swell for everything. And my hands, too. And that, I don't recall having that. Maybe I didn't pay attention to it, but I just think that my body is so much more sensitive now post having a baby. Um, and you can feel it in your feet. Like, you can feel when your skin gets a little tight, and you're like, mm, yeah, they swollen. Um, okay, this is something that I had that blew me away, and I had no idea calluses on your feet and I'm talking like working man calluses like I grew up where you know I grew up in the country um my dad you know had a day job where he wore a suit he was a principal assistant principal um in the school board all that stuff uh assistant superintendent all that stuff however on the side he farmed and he still farms so I grew up doing stuff like that getting dirty being in the mud having to help um, you know, dirty nails, dirty feet, whatever. But calluses on your feet, I have never in my life. I mean, we all get the like nasty winter feet that need to be like fixed with a pedicure, but these calluses hurt. They hurt so bad. And I did not notice it pre having the baby. I did not notice it at the hospital. It was probably a week after I got home. I was getting out of the shower and I noticed my feet started hurting, like the bottoms of my feet. And you know, for like I don't know, the first eight weeks I showered only. You couldn't take a bath. Um, so my feet hurt so bad. And I didn't take the time to look under there. I just thought, well, maybe it's because I'm standing on tile and I'm used to sitting in a bath. I mean, seriously, I was trying to come up with anything. Um, but then I started paying attention. And I'm like, why are they sore around like the pads of my feet and my heels? I looked and I had crazy thick, huge calluses. And um, I started Googling, like, just calluses. I didn't even think pregnancy and calluses. I just Googled calluses. And, and it said something about, like, uh, friction on your feet could be caused by sh shoes or tight shoes or too big. And I'm like, I've been wearing cozy socks. Like, I take care of my feet. I always have. Like, what the crap? Like, what the crap? Um, so I went with a friend of mine. I guess it was, I don't know. March maybe I don't remember to get a pedicure and the girl doing my pedicure she'd had a child and she felt the bottoms of my feet and she said oh you have calluses and I said yeah I said I don't know why she said oh pregnancy causes those and I was like wait what did she say so I literally we got done I'm like 
what, what, what? I got done. I got in the car. I googled. And on babymed.com it says calloused feet and pregnancy. And it says callous feet can result from skin changes related to pregnancy hormones. While the retention of fluid increases in the body during pregnancy, the feet may be left out may be left out of the equation, causing them to become dry and calloused. I did not know that. No one ever told me that. I was like, what's happened to my feet? I went and bought like the doc it was at Dr. O'Keefe's or O'Keefe's uh, hand and feet, like thick cream. Oh, I bought one of the, um, oh my gosh, what's it called? The callus remover thing, which I like, by the way. I'll have to talk about that another time. That helped. I started putting thick, thick cream. The uh, First Aid Beauty, that thick cream, I put that on these babies. Um, I think they all helped, but I also think time helped as well. Um, but I had no idea. I mean, it blew my mind when she said that because I was like, I should have known because pregnancy hormones do everything to you. They're the culprit of everything. Um, and then the last thing I kind of wasn't expecting um, post-pregnancy was all the tears that I had. All of the tears. Um, I'm an emotional person anyway, so... You know, I cry, I'm sensitive, you know, whatever. Um, and having a baby pulls all of that out of you, you know. Um, and coming home, you're so emotional. Um, but I don't know. I said that, you know, I put tears down. I, I don't think, I mean, yes, it is pregnancy related. It's because you're exhausted is what it is. And your hormones are all over the place. Um, and you're trying to get regulated. And, you know, part of you is seeing your baby and you just start crying because she's so sweet and so beautiful. And you did that. And high five, girl, you made it through delivery and you had a baby. And um, part of it's like, oh, my God, now what? What do we do? <laughs> How do we keep her safe? How do we keep her alive? Um, and the other part is I'm so daggone tired, I can't even see straight. So tears, tears, and more tears. Um, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, so I know it probably is one that a lot of people might pass over, but, um, I just want to talk about these things because they, it fast, it's fascinating. It's fascinating. Whether you have kids or you don't, or you want kids or don't want kids, it's fascinating kind of to talk about like what happens to the body, what happens to, you know you know, just anyway, hope you guys get it. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in another video soon. Bye.